Welcome to our next lesson on quadratics. Uh, we're looking today at the three forms of a quadratic. We've already talked about these three forms uh, in some detail already. We should know the vertex form has this a in front, which is the same value of a in front of the factored form, which is the same value of the a in the standard form. So no matter if, of which format we write uh, for a particular quadratic, those values of a will be the same for each of those three forms. A tells you your direction and your width of opening. So just remember those things. The A positive, it opens up, it's happy. A is negative, it's a frown, it's opening down. Um, the farther the value of A is from 1, the skinnier the parabola is. The closer the A value is to 0, the wider that parabola will open. Now the other thing these three forms tell us are certain things. So the vertex form tells us the vertex. So your vertex, remember, switch the sign. The vertex is H, K. So that's your vertex value. You switch the sign on the H. The factored form, this tells you your x-intercepts. So we have r comma 0 and s comma 0 as your x-intercepts. Um, and that's provided you have a 1x. If you have a number other than 1 in front of that x, then that is a whole different ball game um, where we have to set the little factor equal to 0 and solve those many equations. The standard form, what it tells us here is the y-intercept. That's really the only thing that we know out of that standard form. So those are our three forms and what they tell us. Our job here is just to convert uh, three forms. And so the first example, I've given you a format. So here's the equation. This format follows the same as the vertex format. So my a is the value of 2. The vertex here would be positive 3, negative 8. What I want to do is change those into standard form and factored form. In order to do that, to go to standard form, all we need to do is expand and simplify. So to go to uh, standard form, we're going to expand and simplify. And when we get that standard form, we can then take that and put it in its factored form by factoring. And that's when we want to follow that factoring decision tree that we had made earlier in the semester before um, we went on our, our little hiatus here at home. So let me just pop some things into this document. Okay, so I just put the words vertex, x-intercept, and the fact that A is, is the same for all three, and it represents your direction and width of opening. Um, and what we're going to do is this example number one. We're going to take this function, which is written currently in its vertex form, and we're going to rewrite it in the standard form by expanding and simplifying. Now that exponent needs to be applied before we can multiply by 2. Bedma says exponent before multiply. So we could be nice of write that out twice, or we can square the first, we can double the product, and we can square the last. If you need to be nice and write it out twice, please do that. Um, but that's how we get there. Now I can multiply the 2 through the bracket. We're going to get 2x squared. There we go. Uh, minus 12x and a plus 18. I feel like there's a bit of delay on getting my writing out here. That is going to leave me with 2x squared and then a plus 6, uh, sorry, let's undo that, minus 12x and a plus 10. Okay, so that's my standard form. There's no brackets anymore. Everything's expanded and simplified. What we're going to do now is take that standard form, what we have here, and we're going to factor it to be able to put it into its factored form. Now, if I go through my decision-making tree, I know I would look for a common factor first if there is one. And so if I look at all those terms, they're all even numbers. That means they're all divisible by 2. So I'm going to common factor that 2 out. And that's going to give me a, an x squared, a minus 6x, and a plus 5. Now I have three terms in that bracket, um, and I do have a 1 in front. That makes it a simple trinomial. So I'd be looking for two numbers that are going to add to the minus 6 and multiply to positive 5. Negative 5 and negative 1 will do that, and because it's a simple trinomial, I can go directly to that factored form of x minus 5 and an x minus 1. And I just realized I have a square there where I shouldn't have a square. Let me take that out. There we are. So x minus 5 and x minus 1. Now, again, if I wanted to know my x-intercepts, it would be at positive 5 
and at positive 1, and that comes from here and here. My y-intercept comes from here, it's 10, and we already talked about the vertex being positive 3 and negative 8. All right, next example here, express g at x in standard form and vertex form. Again, anytime I want to find standard form, I'm just going to expand and simplify. To get my vertex form, we're going to need to do a little bit more work. So why don't you put the video on pause, see if you can expand and simplify this, and then you can check your answer against the video. All right, in my expanded and simplified form, I have g at x being equal to 3x squared minus 30x plus 48. So that's my standard form. Now to get vertex form, it's not easy to go directly from the standard form to vertex form. We are going to learn how to do that, but that's in our next lesson. We're going to look at this factored form. We're going to go back to that, and we're going to work with the fact that we know that the zeros are at positive 2 and positive 8. I know my parabola opens up, and my zeros are at positive 2 and positive 8. Positive 2, positive 8 diagram not to scale and parabola is opening up. Now we know that the vertex, remember, vertex is halfway between those zeros. The x-coordinate of the vertex is halfway between those zeros because of the symmetry happening. So to get the x-coordinate of the vertex, we're going to take those x-intercepts, which we know are 2 and 8, we're going to add those together and divide by 2, finding the midpoint, finding the average between those two things. So that's going to be 10 divided by 2, then this is add uh, the numerator first, and then because it puts a bracket around that, and it gives us a 5. Now that we have that value, we're going to take that value, that's the, the y coordinate, of the, or sorry, the x coordinate of the vertex, and we're going to use that to solve for the y coordinate. So we're going to evaluate that function at 5. We're going to sub 5 in where we have the x. Uh, you can go to the factored form and do this, which I am, or you can use the standard form. I find it easier to use the factored form myself, but it's up to you what you find better. Uh, Bedma says inside the brackets 5 take away 2 is a 3, and then 5 take away 8 is negative 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times negative 3 would be negative 27. So that dips down below the x-axis at negative 27. So now I'm ready to write my vertex form. Now I said the a was the a was the a, regardless of what the three forms were. And our a value here is 3. Our a value here is 3. That means our a value here will be 3. And then vertex-wise, we've got x take away the x-coordinate of the vertex, which is 5, squared, and then take away the 27. All right, so now... We're ready for the next, next example. Our parabola has the vertex at negative 6, negative 5, and it passes through this point. Write its equation first in vertex form and then in standard form. We actually already did this kind of question where we took, when we had the vertex and a point, um, when we did our first unit, we learned how to come up with that equation in its vertex form. So once you get it in vertex form, you can just expand and simplify to get factored form. But in case you forget, I'll run through how to get that in vertex form. I'm just going to use y this time instead of function notation. I'm going to start with my generic vertex form, which is a times x minus h all squared plus k. Our first step is sub in that vertex where the h is and where the k is. We're going to have x take away negative 6, which becomes a plus 6, and then we have uh, a plus negative 5 or just negative 5. I'm just going to fix that up. I'm just going to write that as x plus 6. So x take away 6 becomes x plus 6. Switching that sign there. Okay, now we're going to take this point of 3, negative 3 and 4, and we're going to put negative 3 in where x is, and we're going to put 4 in where the y is, because our ordered pair is always in that order of x comma y. So 4 is equal to a we're going to put negative 3 where the x is, and then we have our plus 6, all squared, minus 5. And then we have 4. I'm going to do what's inside the brackets first. Negative 3 plus 6 will be positive 3. And then I'm going to square that positive 3 and get 9. So I'll have a times 9 or 9 times a. And now I'm ready to solve for a. I'm going to undo the minus 5 by adding 5 to both sides. 
I'm going to get 9 equals 9a. And then we're going to divide both sides by 9 to get the a by itself, because a is being multiplied by 9. And I get that a is equal to 1. So in vertex form, my equation would be y equals, I don't have to write the 1 in there. I mean, we can if you want, but we wouldn't normally see that written in there. The convention is just to leave it off. And then we get this in vertex form. Now all we need to do is expand and simplify that to get our uh, standard form. So I'll let you do that, put the video on pause, and then you can check your answer. Okay, and when I expanded and simplified, I got y equals x squared plus 12x plus 31. So that should be your parabola in its standard form.